Here one, how's it going? Day for screen to page month? Well, look, I'll level with you. This is gonna be a hard one to dive into. Not because it's gruesome, messed up, and pretty intense scenes. It does have those, and I will give a trigger warning later, but also because it is batshit insane. But I'll try. Anyway, this is a tale of pills, trauma, bruises, manipulation, zombies, and writers dealing with fans who don't really seem to get what their books are about. Beginning with the film, 1999's David Fincher's feature, Fight Club. No, it was a 1996 novel of the same name. Yes, it was based off of a Chuck Palahniuk novel, and it did have a lot in common with the book, but the film is most likely what people think of when they hear the name. Heads up, I'm about to spoil some major twists in the film and the book along with a trigger warning. I will be discussing dark subjects like depression, self-harm, abuse. If these subjects upset you, I will advise you to skip this video as it will be a major factor in both film and comic. The film revolves around a character who in the book is nameless, but the end credits of the film is revealed to be named Jack, who has become numb to life. It looks at his life, his job, and feels nothing from it. He even questions why he even cares about things like the furniture he buys for his apartment, leading to both a deep depression and insomnia. However, he starts to be able to gain some levity by going to support groups, multiple in fact, each regarding people with far more serious problems, from victims of abuse, the terminally ill, and addiction. Yeah, it turns out he got levity from others' emotional vulnerability. Not to feel good about himself, but to feel something. He even admits when he's on a plane, he wishes it to crash since it would at least be exciting. But things begin to change as he meets both Marla, a woman like him also attends these group meetings despite not suffering any of the afflictions, and Tyler Durden, a man who is the narrator's opposite, but also who he aspires to be. He seems to take multiple jobs, but doesn't really care about them, often performing actions just to screw with people, to give a middle finger to consumer culture and just society in general. Tyler explains to the narrator how this way of life has stripped men of their dignity and basic rights. This worldview attracts a narrator and leads to an unlikely friendship, and would even find others who share this worldview, starting an underground fight club, where they can punch their frustrations out. At first, the narrator saw Fight Club as a way to let out that frustration, but as the club grows, Tyler's ambitions grows as well, leading to the club to become more like a cult, who worships Tyler like a god, and even performing criminal acts for him. The narrator would try to stop him, him, but after a confrontation with Marla, Tyler was seeing her throughout both versions of the story, the narrator would realize everyone thinks he's Tyler, and that's because he is Tyler. Turns out that Tyler is a split personality, a living embodiment of all his frustrations and desires, and his desires are becoming more violent as Tyler plans to blow buildings to get what he wants. The narrator, finding no other way to stop his chaotic half, is forced to shoot himself, killing Tyler but somehow surviving the gunshot, with the film only blowing off a piece of his cheek while in the book he was just lucky, or unlucky as the book and implies that Tyler is still alive and is planning to make a comeback. Now, there's a lot more I didn't cover, like Ryler's relationship with the narrator, why she was attending the groups, or the messed up methods that Tyler would use to make soap. Now, as you can see, the original story, along with being gritty and nihilistic, was also grounded in reality. How does the sequel differ? Well, let's get into Fight Club 2 and find out. Warning spoilers. The story begins with a prologue that's pretty much a retelling of the ending to the book, all the way down to the narrator's aforementioned suicide attempt, surviving in the indication that Tyler survived. It's a handy way to help refresh people on what's happening and helps up the comic is not just going to be a sequel to the movie, but also a sequel to the book. But the biggest takeaway is revealed that Marla is pregnant. Jump to 10 years later and the narrator, now going by the name Sebastian, is lying low, taking medication to suppress his other half. However, it's not an easy life as members of the club are still keeping an eye on him, though usually just giving him special treatment in hopes that Tyler would return. When he gets home, we see his son, Junior, is in timeout by the babysitter for making homemade gunpowder. He learned it from watching you. Meanwhile, Marla's going to a support group again, though less convincing as this group is for kids with progeria. So a class act, Marla. Pretty much she uses the group to vent out her frustrations with her marriage with Sebastian. He thought she could help fix him, but now is at the point where all she's done is make him dependent on pills and leaving herself unsatisfied in missing Tyler, or at least the crazy sex they used to have. And by this point, wishes she never met him. Unfortunately, Sebastian hears that and ends up going to a bar where he, the new narrator, revealed later to be Tyler, tells us how he started to have a nervous breakdown as he begins to remember why him and Tyler started Fight Club, not knowing that Marla is back home, tampering with his pills in hopes of getting Tyler back for a night of insane sex. And he does, and much worse. Tyler immediately gets to work, starting with a little chit-chat with Sebastian to say goodbye to him. 
like he did his father. More on that in a bit. And causes a fire that destroys his home and supposedly killed their son. As the two grieve, we flash back to Sebastian's childhood, revealing that both his parents died in a fire. And during his father's funeral, he's met by a familiar looking boy. After grieving, they would talk to the local fire marshal, who reveals the body they found in the fire wasn't their son, but a grad student that disappeared some time ago. It's clear Tyler's men were behind it, and it was established in both the book and the film that, that Fight Club did have men in law enforcement working under them. But why'd they think a grad student would pass for a child? Anyway, Marla confesses to her messing with Sebastian's meds and reveals one of the kids in the support group is a hacker. No, really. And discovers the club might know where their son is. After Marla smashes his face in to look convincing, Sebastian heads to Fight Club to infiltrate it. Though, once entering, Tyler reveals his next big plan is in motion, as he's been manipulating college students to join, and even the babysitter in the beginning was in on it. Meanwhile, we also get the return of Robert Paulson, aka Bitch Tits, who died in both the book and the movie, who has somehow become some sort of zombie. And believe it or not, that's not the weirdest thing, because then we are also met by the author of the book, Chuck Polnick himself, showing up working on the comic and interacting with Marla. And I'm just gonna stop there, not because I want you to read and find out for yourself, though I do recommend that you do, but also because after that, the comic gets crazier and trying to explain it would just honestly be way too exhausting. This book is a total mind trip, and for the better. It's a lot like Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, which is fitting because Fight Club was one of the inspirations for Scott Pilgrim. That's right, this inspired by this. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if this inspired Takes Off, since just like that series, it takes what you know about the original and flip it on its head. In this case, revealing that Tyler hasn't just been around since Sebastian was a kid, but that he's not exactly a split personality, but his own separate being. Yeah, I'll get more into that when I talk about characters. This is Paul Nick addressing one of the biggest issues with Fight Club, both the book and the film, though mostly the film. That being, people not getting what the story is about. Again, I'll talk more about that in characters, but he makes it really clear he's gone sick of it, and how higher-ups will often interfere in his writing to please the fans instead of just letting the artist be themselves. Even if the ending may not be what the readers like. Hell, he's fully aware fans of the film are gonna hate this, especially when it comes to Tyler's depiction. Moving on to characters, we should just tear the band-aid off and just talk about Tyler Durden. The nihilistic, charismatic cult leader of Fight Club, Tyler is more like as he was in the book. While Tyler in the film was all those things, he was also more. Tyler in the book had a god complex and a master manipulator, talking about how the world he wanted to build is less of a world where everyone has a clean slate and start over again it's more of him making his own kingdom, where he promises his followers will live and be treated like gods. He's also more of a representation of toxic masculinity, which was a major theme in the book, as he convinces his followers that society has emasculated them. Yeah, kinda hard to avoid not doing that given our society. He also has a far more omnipresent aura to him, as even when he's not in the room, you feel like he still is that he's something even bigger than just a mental illness. In fact, near the end of the comic, it's revealed that Tyler isn't just a split personality, but a psychic parasite. I'm not kidding, that is real. He's apparently some sort of creature that's been passing through Sebastian's family for generations. So his worldview isn't just from negative emotions coming from Sebastian, but whole generations worth. As you can guess, this reveal didn't really sit well with fans. My guess it was to help dehumanize Tyler and to help paint a picture that he's not someone you should like. Personally, I'm not a fan. I do think that it was necessary, and if Chuck didn't want people to like him, could have just made Tyler more unpleasant. I think that's enough to know that he's a scumbag, and making him a second parasite was just overdoing it. Next we got Sebastian, who's pretty much like both the book and the film, minus his sexual attraction to Tyler. Yeah, no seriously, that was a whole thing in the book but that's not really relevant here. He's a guy who wants to be happy, but feels trapped. Trapped from how messed up society is, trapped by his memories of Tyler as Fight Club follows him, and trapped by himself due to his medical dependency, with the meds he takes to keep Tyler at bay. He's tired of it, but it takes Tyler to literally burn his house down for him to get to the point where he's ready to go to war with him and bring what he built burning down to the ground. You really feel his pain and eventually a bit satisfied as he finally becomes the person he thought Tyler was. Next, we got Marla, and honestly, see she's more like Marla from the film, as her life and motivation seem to be more focused on what's going on with the men around her. Yes, her, the narrator, and Tyler were sexually involved and eventually romantically involved,
involved, but that was more of a side story for her, as her actual story focused on her views on life and how she views her own mortality. We do get some of that again with her relationship with the kids from the group. That's more like a B plot on her side of the story, while the main plot is focused on supporting Sebastian. Yeah, both plans involve stopping Tyler and saving their son. Still, as the story progresses, it feels like she has less agency. Finally, we're going to talk about the author of the comic, Chuck Palnick. It is weird I have to address him as a character, but yeah, he's an actual character in this story. He's trying to tell his story, but at the same time, has his publishers and fans wanting him to zig when he wants a zag. People essentially want him to write the movie, and again, I have to reiterate, they do mean the movie. The critique he has on fans are mostly pointing at fans of the film, and even points out that most fans don't even know it's based on a book. It's an interesting way to show the author's frustration when writing a follow-up to a big hit. The rest of the cast are interesting, and I was actually surprised on how some of them played into the story, like the kids or Sebastian's therapist, who at first comes off as a simple servant to Tyler, but actually ends up helping Sebastian and is the one to tell him what Tyler really is. It's pretty neat. However, I do feel like we should have spent more time with Sebastian and Marla's son, because I'll be honest, he's kind of a nothing character. The art was done by Cameron Stewart with David Stewart on color. You might recognize Cameron's work as as both a writer with the mixed bag that was his back row run, but as an artist, he's known for the even more insane Sea Guy by Grant Morrison. He does a good job combining elements of the movie with some of the character designs, like Marla looking very similar to Helena Bonham Carter, and descriptions from the book like Tyler, while also adding a bit of a punk rock element by having random objects added to the art, as if they're spilling into reality, like the pills and twisted imagery that Tyler views. David Stewart, you might know best as the colorist. For for the legendary DC New Frontier book, or Catwoman when in Rome, and the amazing scrawn head at Dark Horse. And he does a solid job here, having the colors match the grim and gritty the film was known for. On a whole, I dig Fight Club 2. It's not a perfect comic or even a perfect sequel, but it's still a fascinating dive into mental health, one's self-worth, and the dangers of following someone blindly. I do agree that Tyler's reveal was weak and feel like certain moments were either rushed or kind of just raising their hands up and going, okay, that happened. Also, depending on your views on the film and the book, you might have problems with it regarding how Polnick tackles the issues, but I'll let you see for yourself. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates. I'll level with you guys. I need a break. I'll probably take the day off. Relax, play some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Well, if Ash stops hogging the game. Fuck off. I'm trying to play the Gold Saucer mission. <sighs> yeah, I need a break. Later.